Langchain is a framework that allows us to build large language models. The basic building block of Langchain is a large language model. The large language model takes some text as input and it generates more text. So uh, you ha can see many examples of large language models. We have GPT 3.5, GPT 4, we have Hugging Face. So these are some examples of large language model. So you all have heard about some traditional machine learning algorithm. So we can train a machine learning or deep learning algorithm for a specific task, like uh, translating te text from French to English, or for text summarization, or uh, whether this tweet is positive or negative. But using large language model, large language model can be trained to do multiple tasks. So one large language model can be uh, used for multiple tasks, like to generate points, to do text summarization, to translate text, or to write a letter, or to uh, get some more responses. So one large language model can be used to do multiple tasks. So you all have heard about ChatGPT. So ChatGPT is basically an application like many other applications. So ChatGPT is simply an application. ChatGPT internally makes a call to OpenAI API. And OpenAI API internally uses large language models, which include GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. So these are the two large language models uh, which are used uh, by ChatGPT. So ChatGPT is simply an application which internally makes a call to OpenAI API and OpenAI API internally uses GPT 3.5 or GPT 4. So these are the two large language models which OpenAI API internally uses. So if I want to just create an application like Book Summary Generator, so in Book Summary Generator, the user will write the name of the book like Alchemist or any other book name. And the our book summary generator application will generate a summary of that book. So I can decide whether I should uh, read that book and it suits my taste or not. So the user will simply enter the name of the book in book summary generator application and our application, a streamlit app will just generate a, uh, generate a summary of that book. So in book summary generator application, we are using the same architecture as chat GPT. So book ch summary uh, generator is an application like chat GPT. So book summary generator internally makes a call to open AI API, which internally uses GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 large language models. So, but there are some, uh, so you can see, uh, now we have seen that how we can create and streamlit app of book summary generator using open AI API. So till now we have seen that how we can, uh, using open AI API, how we can create a streamlit app. Okay, like book some generator or to find restaurants. So, but there are some limitations of this approach. First of all, open AI API is not free. So it has some cost. So you have to pay that cost to use open AI API. So first uh, limitation is higher cost. So the second limitation is chat GPT knowledge is limited to September 2021. So chat GPT is being trained till September 2021 data. So if I ask chat GPT, who won the World Test Championship, uh, which is and uh, a few months back, and Australia uh, uh, won that World Test Championship? Or if I ask Chat GPT, uh, who won the World uh, 220 World Cup 2022? So Chat GPT will not be able to answer these questions because Chat GPT has been trained till September 2021 data. So if you just ask some question from uh, that or some. Uh, in or some any event that happened in September 2022 or 2023, ChatGPT will not be able to answer because it has been trained till September 2021 data. And ChatGPT has been trained on or uh, instead of ChatGPT, you can say that GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 models have been trained on internet data. Plus, another limitation is uh, ChatGPT does not have access to my private data sources. For example, if I ask ChatGPT uh, how many employees joined my company ABC last month? So how many employees have uh, joined my company last month? So ChatGPT will not be able to answer it because uh, ChatGPT will not ha does not have access to my company's data or my organization data. So that is another limitation of ChatGPT as it does not have access to uh, private data sources or you can't integrate your custom APIs uh, with GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 models as well. So this is one of the limitations 
of this approach. So why we need lang change? So using lang change, we can, uh, if for example, if you want to use lang change, so using lang change, you can use open AI models. You can use open AI models are paid. So GPT 3.5, GPT 4, I have shown you. If you want to use uh, their APIs, open AI APIs, and just use uh, want to use uh, GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 models in your application, so you have to pay some cost. Like for each thousand tokens, you have to pay 0 0.002 dollars. So it's not free. So if you use LangChain, we can use Hugging Face model. We can use Blue models. So in LangChain, they have integrated many different models. So you, uh, you, if you don't, don't want to pay the cost, so you can just uh, use uh, Hugging Face models instead of OpenAI. So plus, you don't need to update the code. Like uh, by just writing a Hugging Face instead of OpenAI while importing the library, you can use Hugging Face model. Is, uh, along with this, you can use other models as well. There are multiple uh, models available or integrations available in LangChain. You can just uh, go to LangChain Quick Start directory and check those. Plus, if you want to get data, so uh, as I told you that uh, GPT 3.5 and GPT 4 models have been free until September 2021 data. So if you want to get some real data information or real time data, you can also integrate Wikipedia, Google APIs with that as well. So you can just get real time data information from them. For example, if I just ask my large language model, like uh, what was the US GDP in September 2022? So if I was using OpenAI GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 models, they will not be able to give me answer because they have been free until September 2021 data. But uh, if I use uh, integrate uh, Wikipedia or Google using LangChain, so I will be able to get the answer that the following is the GDP of US in 2022. Plus using LangChain, you can integrate uh, your custom APIs plus your data sources as well. So so LangChain is a complete framework. There are, so in this framework, you can use OpenAI models, GPT 3.5, GPT 4 models. You can use Hugging Face model. You can use Bloom models and other different models that are available in LangChain. Plus you can also get real-time information from Google, Wikipedia, and from your data sources. So this is uh, what uh, GPT 3.5 and GPT 4 not allows, but using LangChain, we can get information from Google APIs in real time, like what is the US GDP in 2022 or what is the Elon Musk age in 2023. And we can also get information from Wikipedia and our private data sources. So this is the advantage that LangChain provides. So let's move towards the collab parts and let's write some code and see how does it works. So here is the Google Colab notebook for this video tutorial. Before running the script, please go to the runtime and please make sure that you have selected the hardware accelerator as GPU and then click on save and now it's correcting. Okay, so that's all. So now in the first step, we will install all the packages over here. So I will be installing the LangChain and OpenAI package. So as I want to do uh, use OpenAI models, GPT 3.5, GPT 4, so I want to use these models. So I will be using OpenAI package and I am here installing OpenAI package in the first step. Along with this, I am also installing LangChain package. So LangChain is a framework that is used to build large language models or the basic building block in the LangChain is the large language model. So I am installing uh, LangChain and OpenAI packages over here. So I will just run this cell and I am now installing the LangChain and OpenAI package. So if you just click shift and enter, you will be able to install these two packages. So now you can see over here, OpenAI and LangChain package is being getting installed and installed. So uh, basically uh, to run this, um, uh, to, to use the OpenAI models, GPT 3.5, 3.4 uh, in your project or in any application, you will require the OpenAI API key. So you can just go to the uh, open a website and just uh, generate your API key, but it is not free. It will take uh, it will take some cost. So uh, let me uh, show you how you can create your own API key. So now first you just need to go openai.com and then you just need to log in with your account over here. Okay, and then you just need to go to the API section. Okay, and then 
you can just key to go to v api key so you can just create a new secret api key over here by just writing any name over here okay so you can see i've just created an api key over here so that's look good and uh currently i have uh, this is not my paid account i have just created uh, uh on my another gpl which is a paid account so you to use this api key you just need to uh have the member so you just need to go to the billing and you just need to add the payment method because uh it's not free it will just charge you some amount like if you just create a uh, set up the payment of uh method it will charge five dollars from you so you just need to go to the payment method so currently you can see that i have not upgraded to the paid plan yet uh, i have upgraded to the paid plan in my other gmail account but on this gmail account i have not upgraded to the paid plan so it's saying that go to the payment method and you can just set up the paid account over here like i'm in visual and you can just enter your card name so it will just charge you five dollar at the start and then as per your usage uh, you will be uh, billed at the um, end of the month so you just need to have uh, to set your payment method and it will first charge you five dollars and then you will be able to use this api key in any of your project and here you will just get the usage when you use it so i have created the api key but if i cannot use this api key in my project until i don't set up the paid account over here so that's all from here so in this way you can just set your paid account you just need to uh create your account on api as well so uh let's get back the code over now so you can see that uh from i will just upload the secret key file so uh if i just go to downloads I will just upload the secret key file over here. So if I just open this file over here, you can see that uh, in the first here, I will just pass my open AI API key and here I will just pass the SERP API key. So what is SERP API key? To get uh, real time research results from Google. So I will use SERP API key. So to get real time search results from Google, I will be using SERP API key so let me show you how you can create your own SERP API key and it's completely free so SERP API key is completely free so first you just need to go to the serpapi.com and create your account over here you can sign it with google or your, your github account so after creating your account after creating your account you will see this dashboard so if you just go to the API key and here you will find your API key and it's completely free so you can just create your own API key over here as well so I will just here pass my open API key and here I will just enter my SERP API key over here as well so I have just entered those uh, my API keys and so from secret key from the sector dot key uh, dot by file I'm just importing open AI API key over here so now you can see over here i have just imported i am just creating an environment over here so so the basic building block of langchain is a large language model in which uh, we just give text as input to the large language model and it generates more text so we will be using large language model which includes gpt 3.5 gpt 4 or hugging face so we will be using this large language model to get the predictions over here Post, uh, for example if you want to generate a company name based on the company description so we will first initialize the open ai wrapper so i will just uh, provide a complete description like for example over here what would be a good company name for a company that makes colorful stocks so i am just asking my open ai models which include gpt 3.5 or gpt 4 to tell me what would be the good company name uh good what would be a good company name for a company that makes colorful socks so it's saying that rainbow to shocks sock rainbow to socks will be a good uh, name of the company that makes colorful socks so like here suppose we want to generate a company name based on the company description so uh, like you can see over here i am just uh, providing a company description like the company is making colorful socks well please tell me the company name and it's saying that rainbow to socks so we first initialize the open AI wrapper. So you can see over here from langchain.llms, import open AI. 
So here I am just initializing the open AI wrapper over here. Thus, in this case, since we want the output to be more random, we will initialize our model with high temperature. So you can see here we have defined a temperature parameter and we have set so the temperature val parameter values ranges from 0 to 1. So the temperature parameter value ranges from 0 to 1. And here we have set a high value of the temperature as 0 0.9. So since we want the output to be more random, we will initialize our model with high temperature. So what is temperature? So the temperature a parameter adjusts, adjusts the randomness of the output. Higher values like 0 0.7 will uh, make the output more random, while lower values like 0 0.2 will make it more focused and deterministic. So let's go into more details. So temperature value basically tells us how creative we want our model to be. So temperature value tells us how creative we want our model to be. So if we set the temperature value to be zero, it means the model is very safe and it will not take any risk while giving me the output. So if the temperature value is very high, like we have the temperature value from zero to one, and if we set the temperature value one, it means our large language model will take risk. It might generate wrong model, wrong output. Our large language model might generate wrong output, but it will be very creative. Okay. So zero value of temperature means uh, zero value of temperature means that the model will be very safe. It will not take any bets. But if we set the temperature value to be one, it means the model might generate wrong output, but it will be very creative. Like the model will take risk if we set the temperature value to be high. Okay. And here I am initialized the open AI uh, wrapper over here. And here I have just initialized the open AI model over here. And using in this parameter, I have initialized the open AI model and I am just passing what would be a good comp what would be a good company name for a company that make colorful socks as an input to my open AI model. And my open AI model is giving me output as Rambo to socks. So this will be a good company, a good name, a good company name for a company that makes colorful socks. So let's see example number two over here. So here I'm just initializing the open AI wrapper over here. And here I'm just initializing the open AI model. And I'm just passing, I want to open a restaurant for Chinese food. So just me a fancy name for this. So it's saying that Dragon Palace Express would be a good name if you want to open a Chinese uh, food restaurant. Okay. So next is I want to open a restaurant for Chinese food. Suggest so me a fancy name for this. So it's generating another output. For each question, our large language model can generate multiple responses. So for each question, our large language model can generate multiple res responses. So it's saying that Lynx Imperial Palace would also be a good name or if you just want to open a restaurant uh, which has Chinese food. So next, let us discuss as prompt templates, okay? So in many uh, large language model applications, like if I just create a book summary generator application, we do not pass the input directly to the large language model, okay? So in many large model, a large language model application like book summary generator or chat GPT is an, also an application of large language model. We do not pass the input directly to the large language model. We add the user input to a large piece of text called, called prompt template. So it's saying that in many large language model application, we do not pass the in user input directly to the large language model. We add the user input to the large uh, to a large piece of text called prompt template. Okay. What does it mean is that? So let me just show you by example. So here you can see that from langchain.prompt, I've initialized the prompt template or I have initialized the prompt template wrapper over here. And what I'm saying that, what is a good name, name for a company that makes and product will be the input that a user has passed. So, uh, so for example, I have made a website or made an application where I will just ask it to I just um, ask user to enter the name of their product. So for example, I have made an application where I ask user to enter the name of their product. And when the user enter the name of their product, I generate uh, the good comp name, uh, company name, uh, uh, like a good name for their company, like what um, name they can uh, choose for their company. Okay. So I have just made an application where I asked the user to just pass the name of their product and uh, our model will generate 
a good name for a company for your company okay so for example here the user passed the product name colorful socks so for example a uh, user has a factory where uh, they made colorful socks so user enters colorful socks and the user wants uh, the output to be what would be the company name uh, for uh, like what uh, is the good name for a company that makes the colorful socks so in the input user will just pass colorful socks as the input that their product which are they are making and here you can see that this is the text uh, which uh, are uh, we will just add colorful socks into, into over here and we will just pass this complete text to our large language model so we are not passing the colorful socks directly to the large language model we are not passing this input directly to the large language model instead we are just passing this input to this sentence over here and then we will complete the sentence what is a good name for a company that makes colorful socks so the large language uh, in the large language model we will be passing this input what is a good name for a company that makes colorful socks okay so the user will just input colorful socks and the input that will pass to the large language model will be what is a good name for a company that makes colorful socks okay so let's take another example so i just made an application restaurant name generator so the application name is restaurant name generator where user just enter the name of their cuisine and uh, our model will generate the name of the restaurant like what uh, good, uh, what name of the restaurant they can choose okay so here you can see that uh, here the user is just passing their cuisine like Italian, Mexican, Chinese, Indian, Pakistani so here the user will just pass the name of the cuisine and this input cuisine input will be passed to this text like over here and this text will be passed to the large language model as so we will just pass this input to the large language model i want to open a restaurant for italian food so just me a fancy name for this okay so we are not passing this italian uh, cuisine input as to the large language model we are just passing this italian cuisine input to this sentence and we will just pass this complete sentence as the input to the large language model okay so to execute the prompt template so you can see that here we have created prompt template and here we have also created a prompt template so you can see here we have created a prompt template and here we have also created a prompt template so to execute the prompt template we require the chains okay so you can see over here the simplest and most uh, now uh, we are using the chains okay so we will link together model and the prompt templates and the other chains so LNM chain is responsible to execute the prompt template so you can see that here we have created prompt template so to execute this prompt template we require LLM chains LLM chain is responsible to execute the prompt template for every prompt template we will create an LLM chain so for each prompt template we will create an LLM chain so here you can see that uh, we are just first uh, creating an open AI wrapper initializing the open AI model and here you can see that we are creating a prompt template over here and you can see that here uh, uh, for each prompt template as I have defined above, we will create an LLM chain so here you can see that we are just creating an LLM chain and in the LLM chain I am just passing the model as an input as well as I am just passing the prompt template as an input over here as well okay so here in the run chain dot run whatever uh, text i give as the input it will be assigned to this uh, particle variable as product so it will be assigned to this product so uh, like here i'm just passing colorful socks so this will go towards this product like it will just become the sentence will become what is a good name for a company that makes colorful socks okay so to execute LNM chains, we require, uh, so to execute the prompt template, we require LNM chain. So to execute prompt template, we require LNM chain. So you can see that in LNM chain, we pass the model and the prompt template as input and in the chain dot run, whatever input we pass will directly be assigned to the product over here. Okay. So that's how it works. So here you can see that fancy feed socks putting a good name for a company that makes colorful socks. So here you can see that example number two, we have defined open A wrapper, initializing the open A model, creating the prompt template over here. Okay. 
So here the input variable will be cuisine. I want to open a restaurant for cuisine foods. Uh, cuisine food suggest me a fancy name for this. Okay. So if I just pass chain dot run Mexican, so the maximum Mexican will be assigned to this uh, place over here. And this will become, I want to open a restaurant for Mexican food. So just me a fancy name for this. So this text will be passed to the large language model as input. And our large language model will give us the name as over here, like you can see, Taco Terra would be a good name for a restaurant that makes Mexican food. Okay. So I just pass. So if here I'm just setting verb it is to do in my LLM chain. So this makes our output more uh, in a more format way or in a more better. Like you can see over here, this text is being passed to the large language model as input. And we have the name Casa de Fuga will be a good name for a restaurant that makes Mexican food. So for example, here you can see that we have created a one uh, prompt template and we have to execute this prompt template. We have an LLM chain over here. So to, if we have multiple prompt templates, we will have multiple LLM chains. So for each prompt template, we require one LLM chain. So for each prompt template, we require an LLM chain. Okay. So here you can see that if we create multiple prompt templates can we combine uh, multiple prompt templates so here now we will see how we can combine multiple prompt templates so the output from the first prompt template is passed to the next prompt template so if we have multiple prompt templates the output from the first prompt template is passed to the next prompt template and so if we have multiple prompt templates, we will have multiple LLM chains because I told you for each prompt template, we will have one LLM chain. So if we have multiple prompt templates, we will have multiple LLM chains. So now if we have multiple LLM chains to combine the LLM chains and to set, uh, set a sequence, we will use simple sequential chain. So to combine multiple LLM chains, we will use simple sequential chain. Okay. So you can see over here, we have, uh, multiple prompt templates this is the first one this is the uh, second one okay and we here we are using simple sequential chain so for example i want to open a restaurant and here i am just setting the cuisine as pakistani you can see that for pakistani food so just me a fancy name for this so you can see that here we have multiple prompt templates like okay so what output we get over here is will be passed to the to this uh, second prompt template as input okay so as i told you the output from the first prompt template is passed to the next prompt template as input so let me just complete as okay so here from here we'll guess the restaurant name i want to open a restaurant for pakistani food suggest me a fancy name for this so here we will get the restaurant name and then we'll pass the restaurant name from over here so this prompt template will give me the restaurant name okay so we will pass that restaurant name over here in the second prompt template and suggest so some menu items for for example a pakistani restaurant like suhan restaurant or some other restaurant so just some menu items for this following restaurant so here we have created second LLM chain for this prompt template and you can see that here i've just written cuisine as pakistani you can write indian mexican or chinese italian so you can see that uh, here we are just getting menu items over here like chicken tikka masala, vegetable korma, lab logan, josh, asad, paneer, aloo gobi, chana masala, biryani. So this can be menu items for your restaurant which has Pakistani food. Okay. But you can see that here we have one issue. So here we are using simple sequential chain. So the simple sequential chain only show output for the last input like you can see that our simple sequential chain is only showing the output for the menu items it is not showing me the restaurant name okay like so just me a fancy name for this so it is only showing me the output for the last input okay so to get the output uh, information complete output information we will use sequential chain okay so you can see over here i am just using sequential chain over here so i have just created two prompt templates over here. This is the first prompt template. This is the second prompt template. This is the first LLM chain. This is the second LLM chain. Okay. And here I'm just getting the output over here as restaurant name. You can see, and this restaurant name is passed as an input to the second prompt template over here. And in the output we get over here is menu items. 
Okay, so let's execute this and let's see what output do we get. And our cuisine is basically Pakistani food. So let's see what output we are getting. So here you can see that we are getting complete information. So the restaurant name can be Masala Fusion. And you can see that the menu items can be uh, vegetables, mosa jad, aloo tikki, paneer tikka, palak paneer, makhni dal, kashmiri pilao. Okay. So the next thing is agents. So agent is a very powerful concept in lang chain. So let me explain you what are agents. For example, if I want to travel from Dubai to Canada, I tag this in ChatGPT. Give me two uh, flights option from Dubai to Canada on September 1, 22. 2023 so if i just want to travel from dubai to canada on september 1 2023 i just give chat gpt this input give me two flight options from dubai to canada uh, uh two flight options from dubai to canada on september 1 2023 so the chat gpt will not be able to answer because its chat gpt has been trained till september 2021 internet data so if i have chat gpt plus so the chat gpt plus membership costs 20 dollars plus uh, per month so if I have ChatGPT Plus a membership, I will be using Expedia plugin. So if I just enable the Expedia plugin in ChatGPT Plus and I, after enabling the plugin and I just give this uh, input, give me two flight options from Dubai to Canada on September 2021, 2023. So the Expedia plugin will try to pull information about flights from Expedia website and it will show me the information as well. Okay. So let me show you when we enable the Expedia plugin in ChatGPT uh, Plus, what basically happens. Okay. So you can see, the, so basically everyone thinks about large language model is that large language model is a knowledge engine. But actually it's not just a knowledge engine, it's a reasoning engine as well. So ChatGPT, uh, uh, basically large language model is not only a knowledge engine, it's a reasoning engine as well. So when we think about LLM, many people think that it's, this is just a knowledge engine. It has knowledge and it will try to get answer, give answer based on that knowledge. I think here the spellings are not. It will try to give answer based on that knowledge. Okay, but that knowledge is not only limited to September 2021. So large language model like uh, GPT 3.5, 3.5. GPT-4 have been trained till September 2021 internet data. Okay, but, but the thing that most, most people miss out is that large language model has a reasoning engine as well. So large language model has a knowledge engine plus large language model has a reasoning engine as well. And using that reasoning engine, you can figure out when someone types this type of question. Give me two flight options from Dubai to Canada on September 1, 2023. So if as a human, I go to Expedia as we have a reasoning engine in our brain. So we just enter uh, the source and then destination for where we want to our flight to land up and the date we select and we just check the flight information from there. So LLM also has a reasoning engine as well. So if you just pass this text, give me two flight options from Dubai to Canada on September 1, 2023. So if we just pass this text as an input to the large language model, it will automatically figure out source destination and date and it will be using chat gpt plus will be using expedia plugin to get that information from there so here i am using reasoning engine of the large language model so if i asked my chat gpt plus or the chart of my or my chat gpt how much is us gdp in 2022 so as llm has a reasoning engine to answer that question it will use google search tool so to use Google search tool, we have uh, like third API, I think, third API. So the so third API is a real-time API to assess Google search results. So uh, as LLM has a reasoning engine as well, to answer that quest uh, question, it will go to the Google search tool. It will find the answer and then, uh, it, will, uh, then it will use that tool to do plus five. So as I said over here, how much is US GDP in 2022 plus five. So for to answer this question, it will be using Google search tool and the math tool, which we have in the lang chain. So an agent has access to a suitable tools and determines what to use, uh, which one to use depending on the user input. So what is agent in lang chain? So agent in lang chain 
has access to different tools like Wikipedia, Google Search Tool, Mad Tool, and depending on the user question, it decides which tool it wants to it should use. So agent will connect with external tool and it will use LLM reasoning capabilities. All the tools like Google Search Tool, Mad Tool, or Mad Tool are available as a part of LangChain, and you can configure agent. So agent is nothing but using all these tools and LLM reasoning capabilities to perform a given task. Okay, so here I'm just uh, to use Cert API. Uh, I only just need to have a Google Search Result uh, package installed. So I'm just installing this package over here again. Okay, and here in this secret key file, I've just entered my Cert API key as well. So I'm just running this over here and Okay, what it is giving me wrapper. I was making a small mistake. I have not defined the open AI API key. So I've just defined the open AI API key over here. Now it's working fine. So you can see that uh, here I'm using SERP API, which is uh, to get real time search results from Google. And here I'm just using LLM Mad tool. So over here, so because we are doing plus five, so for this, we will using MAD tool and to get what was the GDP of US in 2022, to get this result, I will be using Google search results and to go use the Google search results, I'm using search, search API over here. Okay, and here I have just in you know, slice the agent, I have passed the tools, I have just passed the LLM model over here and here I'm using U0 short react description. So if you just want to learn about this, so if uh, you are using a text LLM, like currently we are using a text LLM, we are not using the chat model over here. So we use for the text LLM, we use zero short react description, uh, description. For chat model, we use chat zero short react description and so on, okay? So, and here we have set verbose is equal to true so that we get a more defined out output or good answer over here. So, okay, so you can see that GDP of the US is 25,462 USD billion and if you just do plus 5 so it becomes 25,467 and to get this uh, result it has used Google search you can see and and to get this result to plus 5 it has used a calculator so here we are using LLM math model and here we are using SERP API to get Google search results so now here now I will be using Wikipedia and LLM math model so uh, I will be using Wikipedia tool to get what was uh, the LLM, when was the LLM, Elon Musk born to get this result? When was when was Elon Musk, Elon Musk born? I will be using Wikipedia and what is his age right now in 22, 2023? So to get this, I will be using Mad Tool as well. Okay, so let's run this. What is that? Yeah. Okay, so we just need to install Wikipedia Python package over here so I will just write this and let's install this Wikipedia package over here so as it installs you will have the output so here we have the output like uh, Alan was born in 1971 and uh, and currently it is 52 years old okay so now here now we'll discuss about memory. So if you just use ChatGPT, you can see that we can see the previous answers of over there as well. So to just save over the answers over here, we will be using uh, uh, in this case chat conversation buffer memory to save our previous search results. Okay. So here we have using OpenAI model, and here you can see that. Okay, so. So we have not installed the LM chain. So let me just go over here and copy the LM chain package. Okay, so let me just copy the package of LM chain. Okay, over here. Okay, so. So currently you can see that uh, we don't have nothing saved in our memory. So if I just type chain, nothing. So to save uh, the previous search results, we can use conversation buffer memory. So here you can see that I've initialized conversation buffer memory. So it will save uh, my search results. So you can see that my two search results are saved over here. But uh, 
convolution buffer memory will save all the search results. Like if I just want to uh, limit it, like just save my previous five conversation chain or 10 to 20 conversation chain. So that uh, for this, I will be using conversation chain. So I can just limit it, like just save my previous five chat search results or previous 10 search results. So if I just want to save my previous five or 10, previous 10 search results. So here I will be using uh, conversation chain over here. Okay, so here you can see that I have to find k is equal to 1. So it will only save my previous one search result. So if we just define k is equal to 10, it will save your previous 10 search result. Okay, so the value of k defines how many search results you want to save. So now you can see that uh, this will, uh, for example, who won the first World Cup? The first World Cup, cricket World Cup was won by West Indies in 1975. So now here I have written how much is 5 plus 5, it's 10. But I was just writing who was the captain of the winning team. So it's saying, I'm sorry, I don't want to answer. No, I don't know the answer of that to that question. Can you provide, please provide me more context so I can help you? The reason why it is not able to answer this question because we have only saved one search result, which is this. We have not saved this search result. If we have saved this search result, our model will be able to give me the answer. Okay. Like you can see over here. We have not defined like one search results we want to save. So the model was able to give me the answer. The captain of the West Indies team in 1975 Cricket World War Cup was Clive Lord. So that's all from this video tutorial. I hope you have learned something from this video tutorial. See you all in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.